Hi guys, Swans away this year, back again for another video on Swan City travelling to East Anglia tomorrow to face Norwich City at Carrow Road at 3 o'clock. Now this is going to be a really interesting game, it's probably going to be a hardest test on paper this season according to the table anyway. Norwich are currently third with 18 points, Swan City currently second with 19 points. So I think both teams will be in our own top six, I think Norwich is special will get top six. I actually predicted Norwich to win the league in my uh, early on predictions, I still think that could happen. They've had an okay start, I think they would have could have done a lot better than they have, they've dropped some silly points. But they are unbeaten in six games, so they're in really good form at the minute. I think the international break's come at the wrong time for Norwich and Swansea, to be honest, because we're unbeaten in five, they're unbeaten in six. So both of us are in really good form, and it's going to be a good game, in my opinion. I think it'll be a few goals. I don't think it'll be a nil-nil. I think defensively, both teams will be okay. I don't think it's going to be a massive high-scoring game, like a 3-3. It could be similar to a Brentford, a Conte, a Bristol City game where we all drew 1-1. One -one. I think one team could narrowly win it by one goal, but I don't think someone's going to win like 3 or 4-0 or 4-1, 4-2. I don't think it's going to be that sort of game. Norwich are very good attack inside though. So Swansea, I think it'll be a very interesting game, so make sure you tune into my watch long tomorrow. So Norwich yeah, last game was a nil-nil draw to Millwall. Now I know a lot of people will be saying, oh, they didn't play that well if they drew nil-nil, but they actually did play really well in that game. They had over 20 shots in the game, I believe they had 27 shots in total. Millwall only had three or four, so they absolutely dominated Millwall, but you've got to give credit to Millwall for being defensively solid in that game. But Norwich, some of the attacking players they've got are really good at this level. We've got Timu Puki, uh, he scored 29 goals, nine assists last time he was in the championship. Also, they've got Tom Cantwell, who did very well in the Premier League last season. Six goals, two assists. He was wanted by Leeds in the summer. Somehow, Norwich City have managed to keep him. He's not actually got a goal assist yet, yet this season. He has missed a few games. But I think Cantwell's a very good player. And also, they've got some other good players. And the other player I'm going to go into is probably my favourite Norwich player. And I think he's probably their best player. So, the player I'm talking about is Argentinian winger, Amy Buendia. Now, he scored eight goals, 12 assists last time he was in the Championship. I believe he scored against us at Car Road last time we played Norwich City as well. Very good player, Amy Buendia, very good technically on the ball. Uh, not the tallest, he's a very short player. Similar to Messi. I know people will be watching the same way comparing a North City player to Messi, but in the way they play, they're very similar. He's small as well, he's good at free kicks. Uh, the way he picks and pockets out of space is very good. Norwich will be a really big threat. Unfortunately, I didn't get a Norwich City vlogger on or a fan. I couldn't get anyone on. I did ask someone. They said yes, and they've let me down. So it's unfortunate. So it's actually the first preview of an opposition fan. So then the three players I'm picking out for Norwich were the key danger men. Also in defence, they've got Max Ahrens, who was won by Barcelona. Tim Krul, who's in the Netherlands squad. Got Grant Hanley, who's a very experienced defender. This squad's got quality throughout. So it's going to be a very, very interesting game. For Swansea, then, our last game was a 1-1 draw to Brentford, where actually we played very well. I was wasn't expecting too much in this game. I actually did predict a 1-1. Uh, which I'll go on later in the video, but I think if one team was going to win, it was going to be Brentford, but on the game, watching the game, stats, fans analysis, uh, pundits analysis as well, Swansea deserved to win this game. We, we dominated the shots, we had more shots on target, we had created more chances in the game, we looked like more team who's going to score. Brentford did take the lead with a runner play from a Corey Swift mistake in midfield, but apart from that, Brentford did not have too much in the game. I don't think Freddie Woodman actually had to make a save in the game. I know they missed a header later on, which he should have scored, but Woodman didn't have to make a save, which shows a lot of, you know, how we've been because last season against Brentford in the two league games, I think we showed them too much respect. Yes, they did have Ben Rama and Watkins to that team as well, but they've replaced him with Tony, who's a very good player, so you can take Watkins out. I just think we showed them too much respect last season. I showed a bit more fight to Brentford because of the playoff loss. It must have hurt us. I think it hurt the fans, the players, the coaching staff as well. So, you know, it was good to see a bit of fight. And fingers crossed we can see that tomorrow because Norwich, they are a better team than Brentford. They've got some, they've got a lot more attacking options. I think they're better defensively as well. So, good on to the injury news in Norwich City have a lot of players injured or out for this game. They've got Josh Martin, Kieran Dowan, Onhel Hernandez, Sam Byron and Javi Quintila all out. I'm not sure if Adam Eade is back for this game. But for Swansea, George Byers, Moan Gibbs White out as always. Ben Gabango uh, was supposed to play against Brentford but got injured in the warm-up just before the game. Uh, he's a doubt. I don't think he'll play because Cooper's not really said anything. He said they've not checked yet. So I think it's a bit of a rush. So I don't think Ben Gabango will be in the squad for tomorrow's game. So let's get on to score predictions. There's five people who corrected the Brentford score Right, so I'll give you a shout in a minute. But let me just congratulate myself because I didn't say in the video, but I put in the comments just after the video after someone uh, correctly realised I did not put a prediction in. I put Sprintford one son to one Tony and AU. Let's get a round of applause for me. That's absolutely brilliant for me to be honest. I did not expect to get the score right, let alone the scorers. So I think that's the first time which has ever happened on the series. So to congratulate me, lad, for no shout, I can't really give myself a shout, but you guys congratulate me by giving me a like. So let's get 
50 likes on the video. So, shout to Swansea underscore Talk. He also said Ivan, Tony, and Andre who just go with a 1 1 prediction. Big shout to Reese N13 as well, who also predicted a 1 1 Tony and AU. And congratulations to Harry Horton 1234 Life, Adzino X, and Yonan, who all predicted a 1 1. Shout to all of you five and myself. I owe you a pint and a pie. I'm going on to my lineup then. I'll start with Freddie Woodman goal again. He's a number one keeper. Ben does not really play much unless it's a cup game. Back five, Connor Roberts again. Very energetic going forward Tuesday. Therefore, he did very well uh, coping with the likes of Mbwemo and stuff like that. They didn't have too much to soak. Uh, the left wing back, Jake Bedwell. Four, he had a quiet game actually against Brentford. But again, keeping Brian Mbwemo's quiet is no easy task. And he did very well. Three to centre backs then. I'm sticking with the same three which played against Brentford. That's going to be Carl Norton, Ryan Bennett and Mark Geehy. Kyle Norton played very, very well again. First couple of games this season in the free at the back, he was a little bit dodgy, you know, giving some silly mistakes away. So I wasn't too sure if he'd fit in the system. But I think he's a much better centre back than a right wing back in this formation. Ryan Bennett used to play at like, Norwich, of course, we'll know all about them. He'll want to impress because uh, I think he left Norwich on a free transfer, so he'll want to impress. Mark E here again, I actually think Mark's probably our best defender at the minute. Um, really quick, physical, can pass the ball as well. We've seen he can strike the ball as well. So I can't wait for Mark E to get his first goal for the club. Midfield two then. I'm going to bring in Matt Grimes and Jay Fulton in the midfield. I thought Matt Grimes played excellent when he came on. This is what we want to see from Matt Grimes. You know, he got dropped for the last two games because his performance levels was dropping. And come on Tuesday, makes an impact in the game, gets an assist as well. That's what we want to see from Matt Grimes. Better performances, better set pieces. And I think the set pieces were really good Tuesday as well. So, you know, Matt Grimes, that's what we want to see. He'll probably be captain again. I, I like Matt Grimes. I don't mind him starting. But I want to see those level of performances, just like against Brentford in this game. Jay Fulton then, again, very superb in the midfield uh, some of his towers are exceptional when Corey Smith would some, sometimes make mistakes he tracked back very well and got the ball in the attack midfield of Richard Ingham and Casey Palm for Jan Danda my reasoning for this is I don't think it's a Jan Danda type of game to pick up the space I think we're going to need a bit more physicality in midfield Jan Danda Tuesday had a quiet game again against the Brentfords and Norwich also not types of games it's like against the Blackburns or the Stokes which is going to be a bit more space in midfield because they're a bit more defensive Blackburn and Stoke than Brentford and Norwich so there's going to be a lot more space because they're going to sit back a lot and potentially hold up for a draw and Brentford and Norwich will not be doing that up front now I'm going to stick with the same two Andre and Jamal Lowe AU got his goal Tuesday uh, potentially could have got his second and added time as well very unfortunate not to score that Jamal Lowe I know he's getting criticised a lot for you know he doesn't offer much apparently but I think you know his work ethic and his pace offers a lot to help helps Andre you get some space and get Yan Dan in behind sometimes. So I know a lot of people criticise Jamal Lowe, but a lot of people criticise him at half time against Bristol City and then we've seen. So he can have his moments. I don't think he is a striker though, but his worth ethic really impresses me. And on the bench you can have like Stephen Bender, Victor Jokerez, uh, Wayne Routledge, maybe John Garrick, Liam Collins. We've got a lot of options on the bench, Yan Dander of course. I think Victor Jokerez, I know a lot of people know he's not my type of player. Uh, I said in the stream, if he scored, I need to keep going. I might stick out tomorrow. But actually, his hold-up play was very good Tuesday. He should have scored as well. He should get his first goal soon. I know my career mode, he scored two. So hopefully, uh, Victor Jokeris can take his FIFA form from my career mode into real life and he'll get a brace. We've gone on to my prediction then. I think we're going to win this. Every time I'm positive, we seem to lose. We all know what's going to happen. And we're going to get battered 3 or 4 nil. Emmy Boyd to your hat-trick. Pookie with the other one. I'm actually going to go for a 2-1 win. i got a sneaky feeling I'm going to win this game. So for Norwich, I'm going to predict Emi Buendia to get his second goal of the season. For Swansea, I'm going to reckon there's going to be two centre-half scoring. I don't know why, but I think Cal Morton's going to score from the edge of the box. I've just got a feeling. And go for ex-Norwich City man, Ryan Bennett. Now, you know me, I always love to predict um, centre-half scoring. So I'm going to go 2-1. I think Ryan Bennett's going to score an head. I think Cal Morton's going to score outside the box. I think Emi Buendia will score a free kick. So that's my prediction. If you want to shout out to the next video, which I actually don't even know what it is. I think it's Raw from home because there's an international break after this week. Uh, so there's not going to be any Swansea content really for two weeks so if you want to shout for that video get your score predictions in don't have to get the scores right but i always like to see who you predict the score so get that right and it'll be shouted out in the raw from preview so that's gonna be it for today's video guys please hit the like button comment subscribe turn bell notifications on as well because sometimes youtube doesn't send my videos to you guys so if you turn bell notifications on you'll know when i upload and you'll be able to uh, like the like the video as soon as it's out thank you guys recently for the watch alongs you know since the wick and watch along we've been getting more views in every stream so that's really good i will be paying 10 pounds for the game tomorrow so if you do don't want to pay the money i want to get some expert analysis and be sure to check my stream out i'll be standing at 250 as always for 3 p.m kickoff it should be a lot of fun Jen, and i'll see you in the watch on tomorrow come on the swans
Oh, 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 oh,